Number 90. A buffer solution is prepared from equal volumes of 0.200 molar acetic acid and the 0.600 molar sodium acetate. Use a 1.80 times 10 to the negative fifth as the Ka for the acetic acid. And then we have letter C. They're asking for what is the pH of a solution that results when 3.00 milliliters of a 0.0034 molar HCl is added to 0.200 liters of the original buffer. Okay, so once again, uh, we do see some key uh, keywords here, right? Now, I'm assuming that we already did part A and B. If you guys are on the playlist, it's just the, uh, the number before this one in the playlist. So there is a couple of things that is going to transfer over into this question, but we'll get there. But we're still looking for the pH, and they did tell us that we have a buffer. So we're still going to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch in some form, because we always use buffers. We always use Henderson-Hasselbalch when we're dealing with the buffer, especially when they ask for a pH. And that's this formula right here. So we're definitely going to do that. Now, we already established that the acetic acid is literally the acid. And the sodium acetate is the base. Okay. Now, we're still looking for that pH, so question mark. From part A and B from the last video, we did find out that the pKa value of this solution was 4.745, so we don't have to do that over again. But now, since we're adding HCl to our buffer these bases and acid values are going to change. So the question is, I first have to find out what these uh, new molarities are, and then I can solve. Well, how am I going to do that? Well, let's just put this over to the side then. So I'm going to put this over to the side, and we're going to do something that we haven't really done before in this uh, chapter. Now, it's just a helpful tool for you guys, and it's just a three-tiered uh, like a three section chart like this. And what's going to happen is you're going to put your conjugates, what you started with on one side or the other side of this little three tier thing. It does not matter whether you put the acid or the base on the left or the acid or the base on the right. It just has to be the buffer on the left and the right. So maybe what I'll say is just to kind of guide you here. We're going to put the buffer acid on the on the uh, the left side. Thank you. I still have no idea what left is from right. And we're, we're going to put buffer base on the right side. So in this case, we're dealing with the acetic acid. And, and it's okay if you don't know what these look like, right? We can put the what these actually look like, but they didn't give that to you. So just know that if you don't know what they look like, you know, as far as like symbols, it's fine. You can still answer the question. So I'll do that for you guys. And we'll just say, okay, this is the sodium acetate. Or kidoki. And what you're going to do is you're going to add the compound in the middle. Now, if whenever you're doing this, whatever you're adding, whether it's an acid or a base, it should be a strong acid or base. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just bring, let this come down a little bit, just so that I can say that this HCl is a strong acid. That's on your list of your six strong acids, and the strong guy always goes in the middle. So in this case, I'm going to say SA, strong acid, and it's going to be HCl. Cool. Okay, now when you're using this, the only unit, so star this up guys, the only unit that's allowed in this little, you know, handy dandy thing is moles, moles only. But uh-oh, we have molarities, but that's okay because they did say that we're adding it to 0.2 liters of the original buffer. So I have my molarity and I have my liter because remember the formula, molarity equals moles 
divided by liters. And if we just rearrange this, it would be essentially moles equals molarity times liter. So all we have to do is just take that molarity and times it by the liter. So for the acetic acid, and maybe what I'll do, I guess I'll do it on this side. So for the acetic acid, all you have to do is take that molarity, the 0 0.200, and times it by, they told us that it was 0.2 liters of the original buffer. So buffer has to go with buffer. Okay, so it's 0.2 times 0.2. So we have zero, and maybe I'll do that in red, 0 0.04 moles for my acetic acid. I have to do the same for my base. So sodium acetate, the molarity for that is 0 0.600, and we're using the same volume so 0 0.200, okay, so 0 0.6 times 0 0.2, and I'm going to put it on the, the buffer side, 0 0.12 moles, and now we just have to do it for the HCl. Now this one, remember, I still have to do the same thing, so maybe I'll just pull this up. So HCl, molarity times liters, they gave us the molarity of 0 0.034, but now this is not in liters. So I have to get the three mils into liters. Remember, if you want to go from milliliters to liters, all you have to do is just divide by 1,000. So three divided by 1,000 is basically 0 0.003 liters. 003. So that times 0 0.034, that's the molarity. And now you have a really small number, but it's an acid. So 1.02 times 10 to the negative fourth. And maybe just for simplicity of the video, I'm just going to get rid of the units here because we already know that they're in moles. Okay. Now, the idea here is that you're always going to get rid of the lowest number. Chances are, what I like to do to make it even easier than that, I always subtract from the strong acid or the strong base, if this was a strong base. So in this case, we're only adding a little bit of the HCl, so the buffer is going to eat it right up. So I'm going to subtract that. But this is the number that you're going to basically transfer over to both sides because it's like a chain reaction. If you do something with the HCl, you know, according to Le Chatelier's principle, you know, something has to happen with the acetic acid and something has to happen to the sodium acetate. And remember, acid and base reactions always are one to one to one relationship with each other on a balanced equation. So that's why it's just easier to do these little charts. So 1.02 times 10 to the negative fourth and one point 0, 0.02 times 10 to the negative fourth. Now think about it. If you're adding a strong acid and that amount is interacting with another acid, what's going to happen to the acidity? Is it going to increase or is it going to decrease? They're both red colors, so they will increase. They go together. So this will be added. However, the base is going to try to eat away at the acid. So instead, this will be a subtraction. The colors are two different colors. And now when we do that, we get a final number. And since there's no more HCl, this is zero, so thank goodness. And now we just say, okay, 0 0.04 plus 1.02 times 10 to the negative fourth. And I get zero point, and maybe I'll do that in red. I get 0 0.040102, and then for the base, times 10 to the negative fourth, I get 
zero point one one nine eight nine eight. Okay. And now here are my new values for the buffers, right? The acetic acid and the sodium acetate. Acid and base. These are your new numbers now that go in the Henderson Hasselbalch equation. So the base number, you don't even have to convert it back to molarity. That's just an extra step that is not needed. So the base would be 0 0.1198898. And the acid, since there's no strong acid left, you could just plug these right in. So I guess I'll just do it down here, just to show you guys. So the new pH would be equal to the 4.745 plus the log of the base, which is the 0 0.119898 divided by the 0 0.040102. And now all we've got to do is just plug it into the calculator. You could plug this all in one shot, or you could do the log and then add it to the 4.745. Well, let's just see what we get. Log of 0.119898 divided by 0 0.040102. Right, zero four zero one. A lot of zeros in there. And I'm going to add it to four point seven four five, and I believe let's see three sig figs all around. So let's just put uh, three sig figs after the decimal for the pH five point two two one. So it didn't change really from the beginning. I believe in part A, it was 5.222, but don't quote me on that, but I think, I think that's what it was. But anyway, here is the final pH. So the pH didn't move. If we added just a tiny bit of a strong acid, the buffer will eat it right up and the pH will be relatively the same. That's why we have a buffer system in our body. If we eat something too acidic or too basic, chances are it'll be too acidic, our body's fine because the buffer system, our carbonic acid buffer system in our body just eats it up and our blood pH does not change pH value. All right. So cool little biology lesson. Thank you uh, for viewing the video. I really hope this helped. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out and I hope you guys are having a great day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.